you think your tomato has got a virus infection, then it's important to get rid of it immediately. The reason is pests like aphids can spread the virus from diseased plants to healthy ones. Now, you don't need to worry about composting the waste because when the plant breaks down, the virus dies with it. The important thing to do is to act promptly, immediately you see any concern. Blossom end rot. What is it and what do you do about it? Blossom end rot occurs in plants like tomatoes or capsicums and it's where you see this black sunken area at the bottom of the fruit. There are two main causes. In most areas of Australia, it's actually caused by a lack of calcium. And to overcome that, all you simply need to do is supplement with dolomite or agricultural lime. The other main cause is irregular watering. When plants dry out a bit, then they get a really good soak, then they dry out again. In my case, it was caused by natural irregular watering. We had two summer downpours, which was quite unusual for this area. And not all the fruit was affected, only fruit that was on the plants at the time. Most of the fruit since then is all good, so there's nothing I need to do or worry about. People often ask me why the leaves of their box hedges go that sort of orangey browny colour. Well, it's because over the years there's been fertiliser added, the soil has gone a little bit too acidic and it locks up the nutrients. By applying dolomite lime, you'll raise the pH and those nutrients in the soil will be released. The leaves will go from that colour to this nice glossy green. Canker is one of the most frequently encountered diseases of tomatoes. It's caused by a bacterium, which is really abundant. It starts, generally speaking, if people start foliar feeding or wetting the leaves of tomatoes. So when you water them, water them at the base and do it during the morning so that the plants can dry out. If the plants become infected, it starts with the leaves. Remove them and put them in the compost. It will eventually spread through the stems and reduce the quality of your crop, but it is possible to get a decent crop even from diseased plants, so don't rip them out immediately. This bacteria doesn't last very long in the compost heap, so you've got no worries about reinfecting future crops. If your garden's being overrun with soft-bellied insects like grey or green aphids, the larvae of cabbage white butterfly or scale, and if you've got a glut of chilies, then you can make yourself a pretty potent insecticide to control all of these pests. First off, you have to start with a base, and that's white oil. This is simply made with some dishwashing detergent in a liquid form, and that's about a quarter of a cup. It allows all the other ingredients to stick to the insect. Next up, cooking oil, just the cheap stuff. You put a cup of this in, and what this does is coats the insect blocking up its breathing parts. You're basically drowning the insect in oil. And that's your white oil concentrate. Just give that a shake, and there you go. Now, to give that some potency, it's time to put the chilies in. I want to break these chilies up, but I don't want to get them in my eyes, so I'm just putting them in a plastic bag and bashing them with a hammer. Now all I have to do is add my chilli to my white oil. And there you go. There's your chilli oil concentrate. That needs to infuse for about three days to become really potent. And then you mix that, about a teaspoon of it, in a litre of water. And you can spray it on your plants, covering your insects. But make sure that you don't spray on a windy day. Make sure that you're spraying your target insects, not beneficials like ladybirds or lacewings. Also, because it's got the oil in it, you don't want to be spraying this on a hot day unless you want deep fried plants. People want to know what the lumpy bits are that have suddenly appeared on their lemon trees or even a lime tree. It's a wasp that has laid its eggs into the branches and stems and caused a swelling. They're quite large swellings. It's called gall, and it's a gall wasp that causes it. You can either live with it or you cut it right out. But one of the major pest problems I've found is the black aphid, like this, and it can devastate the plant almost overnight like the tree down on the balcony. A wise gardener once said to me, pest control is all about observation. 
If you can get in early before the population explodes, the pest can be controlled easily. And this pest can be controlled with a contact killer like pyrethrum. You'll need to spray over the top of the leaves as well as their underside. And you'll need a few applications over a few weeks to really knock them on the head. What is leaf curl? Well, leaf curl is generally caused by a fungus problem, especially on trees like peaches and nectarines, when in early spring, the leaves emerge and they're all crinkly and blistered. They're very ugly. Those leaves will fall off, but don't worry. If your tree is healthy, you'll find that those leaves do come back. Just make sure that any leaf that has fallen on the bottom of the tree, make sure you pick that up, bin it.